So my name is Shui Fong, and uh, I'm a third year PhD student uh, in, in the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And uh, today I'm going to give a talk uh, named Unknown and Where Learning for Object Detection and Beyond. So during the talk, feel free to interrupt, and um, I'm happy to take your question. So let's start. Yeah, so nowadays, um, we all know that deep neural networks have achieved unprecedented success in many domains, such as um, image classification, object detection, and uh, reinforcement learning. So I would like to start the talk uh, further by showing you this video. So this is a model trained on the Berkeley Deep Drive 100K dataset uh, performing bounding box tracking on the road. So needless to say, deep learning has achieved pretty remarkable success um, in many uh, exciting areas. And I personally feel very fortunate to witness many breakthroughs since I started my research in three years ago. Um, so today, instead of adding more praises on deep learning, I would like to encourage you to take a, a step back and um, have a more critical look at the method and technologies we build right uh, nowadays. And hopefully by the end of the talk, uh, we can see things uh, in a more well-rounded perspective. Um, I, I know there are many experts in statistics, machine learning, and AI uh, in the audience. So let's think for a, a second, how, how, how would you um, approach building and deploying such a self-driving car model? So the typical procedure is uh, firstly, you're trying to um, collect some training data with corresponding labels and train on your favorite machine learning model. And output typically contain pretty fine categories such as pedestrian, car, truck, and so on. So of course, there are thousands of other details to solve through right now. So let's say once you have finally a, a model with decent performance and uh, ready to deploy, so more unexpected works has uh, just begun. Why do I say that? Uh, because the classical machine learning assumption is the a training and uh, testing distribution match which is the closed word assumption. So how about um, the models operate in the open world where the training and testing distribution differ? So in this case, uh, the unknown objects uh, can naturally emerge, uh, which usually hold a different class name uh, from the in-distribution training classes. So for example, if we took these two images from the MS, MS Coco dataset and run through the self-driving car model, which just train on the Berkeley deep drive data, uh, Berkeley Deep Drive um, data sets. Uh, so you can see that the model can produce overconfident predictions um, for these unknown classes, um, how and helicopter. So which um, was uh, never exposed to the model during training time. So in, in the hour, other words, uh, deep neural networks do not necessarily know what they don't know. So this has uh, raised um, significant reliability concerns because the algorithm that can classify this out of distribution samples as one of the known classes can be catastrophic. Um, think about in the um, healthcare domain, a medical machine learning model trained on a certain set of diseases, um, which is the in-distribution diseases may encounter uh, different diseases in a test time. And um, it can cause mistreatment if we do not handle it cautiously. So, yeah, so right now, one question we're very concerned about is how to build unknown way deep learning models for reliability, uh, reliable decision making in the open world. So now um, our research is trying to approach this problem by the technique called out of distribution detection. So first, uh, let's take a look at, at uh, what is out of distribution data. And um, I'm firstly going to give you a very brief introduction on the problem setup. So very commonly in the closed world setting where, where we usually have a, a three Gaussian mixture data uh, with uh, three, in, within three classes, uh, which are the zero, one, and two. And we define this uh, training data distribution confined this um, P in of X, which is called in distribution. And the label spaces um, consist of um, three discrete values, which are the zero, one, and two. So usually um, we co then collect some training data from this in-distribution and then feed the data to the learner, which maps from the input space X to the label space R of C. And then we usually uh, use this uh, technique called empirical risk minimization, which is called ERM in short, and then which is simply takes the average loss of the training data set and then 
Finally, after minimizing this loss, we will get the optimal model, um, which is um, in a closed world setting. So, um, so how about the models in open world? In this case, the unknown classes from the out of distribution data, which are denoted as the orange triangles, uh, will emerge in this case. So, in this open world setting, so what are the challenges for um, performing out of distribution detection? Um, in this setting. So firstly, um, we argue that there's a lack of supervision from the unknowns during training. So because the models are usually trained only on the grid dots, um, on the in-distribution data using the technique such as ERM. And um, if we uh, want to deploy a model in the open world, then there's a huge space of unknowns in the, um, especially in the high dimensional space. So and it's really very hard or impossible to anticipate unknowns, which are the triangles in advance. Um, so then you might ask, so what if we can take some like post hoc um, out, out of distribution detection methods such as uh, those uh, can be calculated based on the classification logics um, to um, perform uncertainty estimation. So we argue that those methods aren't sufficient to fundamentally mitigate this problem. So if you look at this, um, the, the uh, right figure, which shows that the uncertainty estimation surface of model training using a standard cross entropy loss. So here, um, the darker blue region means the region that is more likely to be in distribution. So if you think of, uh, in this case, the even if the points that, that is very far away from the in distribution data points are um, regarded as the um, in distribution data points, which means the model has the overconfident predict uh, overconfident predictions uh, issue in this problem. So, but what we really desire is uh, um, a model that has only uh, be confident around its uh, in distribution training data points and then gradually decrease its confidence uh, when the data approaches to the region, which is very far away from the in distribution data. So that's uh, the ideal case we, we want to um, make the model to, to have. And then, um, so, so, how, so how to uh, design approach that tries to transfer the model on the left, uh, which is trained by the uh, close or risk only to the um, ideal case, which is shown on the left, right. So in this, uh, uh, in this uh, talk, we're going to highlight that. So we, instead of only trained by the close world risk, we should um, like uh, propose a new dual training objective, which uh, not only minimize the close work, close world risk, uh, such as the classification error on the in-distribution data points, but also minimize this um, open world risk, uh, which um, measures the error of the OD detector denoted as G. So that's, uh, that's uh, um, the entire storyline of this talk. So, it turns out that uh, in the literature, there's um, a paper, very famous paper by Dan Hendricks et al. Uh, in iClear 2019. They proposed the te techniques called outlier exposure. So this kind of uh, method uh, actually um, um, like um, uh, directly give the model some access to the online data during training time for regularization. So one of the very, um, uh, key techniques here is, is try to explicitly leverage the real OD data for um, in-distribution versus OD separation. So for example, if you uh, consider the image level OD detection, then you in this approach will give you a bunch of diverse OD data shown on the left figure. If you are concerned about object detection models, you have to prepare a data set that is spe specific curated by um, this um, bounding boxes around the OD objects, and you have to label these objects as out of distribution. And um, in this uh, paper, uh, so here the uh, open world risk is, um, they actually propose a loss of trying to force the classification logics on this available online data to be uniformly distributed. And um, uh, in contrast, the uh, classification logics um, on the in-distribution data is um, has some high peaks. Uh, that is uh, uh, property induced by the very common cross-entropy loss. So 
then it can separate the in distribution and OD data by such property. But it turns out there's a, a lot of disadvantages of this um, technique called uh, analyzed exposure. So firstly, you have to prepare the data uh, which requires heavy du duplication procedure. Um, because imagine that you, if you firstly, uh, in the first stage, you have a, a in distribution classes, which only have 10 classes. And then during model deployment, you want to expand those uh, in distribution data to 20 classes. Then you have to like check for each online image, whether the uh, whether it contains some in distribution classes. So um, that requires some heavy um, like manual pre-processing before um, usage. And the other um, thing about this technique is that annotating the OD images or objects is very expensive. So imagine if you specifically deal with the object detection model, then um, you have to like provide such bounding boxes uh, around the um, outlier object. So which can take 32 seconds per image to annotate on average. So one of the very like, a natural question to ask here is how to get proper supervision for the unknowns without um, costly or manually pre-processing of this um, online data. So here um, in this talk, uh, I'm going to show two works, or uh, three works uh, that try to talk, tackle this issue from two different perspectives um, by proposing firstly, the allies or the unknowns potentially reside in the low density space of a in-distribution sample space. So in this case, we'll only have access to the in-distribution training data points, which is very uh, usual um, in the um, proposal setting, but um, we will try to synthesize them um, by, uh, by this uh, assumption. And then the second uh, point is, in order to synthesizing the outliers or the unknowns, we need a good representation space um, for doing training. And the following uh, presentation are based on the following three papers, uh, which are um, uh, two papers from the iClear and one paper from NeurIPS. So firstly, we're going to take a look at the um, first paper, um, which is VOS, Learning What You Don't Know by Virtual Online Synthesis. So this is a joint work with Eric and Mu and Sharon from UW Medicine. So uh, for virtual ally synthesis, uh, the intuition of this paper is uh, very simple. So um, say if we don't have the real ally inputs, we can synthesize feature space outliers instead for a uh, substitute. And the first step in, in the VOS approach is that we're trying to modeling the latent representations as a class conditional multivariate Gaussians. So say we have the panoplia features denoted as H of X conditional parameter theta, and then we can um, model, model it as the Gaussian distribution with the mean vector mu and the covariance matrix sigma. And then at the next step, we're trying to estimate the distributional parameters of this um, class conditional multivariate Gaussian distribution. And um, so this can be done by having a bunch of um, training data or training objects. So, so by definition, we can calculate the mean vector and the covariance matrix um, using these training data points. Um, and then the in the next step, we'll try to sample virtualize from the low density space of the estimated distributions. So here, say we generate um, for specific Gaussian distribution, we generate a bunch of um, data from this distribution, say one 10 K, and then we try to calculate for each of these data points the density fun density values for each for for it, and then we we'll try to select those data points that are with the lower lowest density as the outliers, and uh, so that's finished the step three, and then for so we do it for every class, and then collect those virtual outliers for um, the next step. So in the step four, we um so now we have the both the in-distribution uh, feature embeddings and the outline embeddings we synthesize in step three. And then we can take a linear or non-linear transformations on these um, two types of data by the matrix W classification. And then once we have this uh, final classification logics, we can um, calculate the energy scores um, based on these logics. So the energy scores here is a uh, 
a very simple and uh, but effective indicator, um, post hoc indicator that um, try to um, separate in distribution and OD um, features. So then, so now we have the in, the, uh, the the features of in distribution and uh, outliers, and then we have the energy scores. So our learning framework jointly uh, optimize both accurate classification and uh, from the in-distribution and the reliable deletion of data from out of distribution based on the energy scores. So here, um, it's basically have some something to do with the open world risk. And then we actually instantiate the open world risk as the binary level set estimation loss. So here we want to force the energy scores for the virtual outliers to be bigger than zero. And um, the energy scores for the um, in distribution feature to be smaller than zero. And then once we minimize this open world risk, the um, energy score distribution for um, both the in distribution and OOD can be separated um, during test time. So, um, and so that's the whole learning framework. And um, in this paper, we also um, try to revisit and propose a new a setting, which is um, object level OD detection. So firstly, um, our approach um, addressed this um, object level OD detection problem um, as a first class construct. And um, so while we're trying to focus on this uh, problem, it is, turns out that um, the previous very popular approach in the OD detection literature actually focus on the image level detection. Um, so this kind of uh, detection technique can be limited as um, because for an image, it could be OD in certain regions while being in distribution as well. If you only um, want to apply this kind of image level OD detection technique, then it will cause um, severe ambig disambiguities um, among the, the different patches of the image. So. Yeah, so we, we apply our method on a very classic uh, fast ASN models. So here um, we synthesize the outliers in the penultimate layer of the classification branch and then try to separate their energies on the classification logics. Um, so for that, so that's basically what we did for the open world risk, but for the closed world risk, then uh, for object detection models, then you have to replace the classification loss with a combination of the classification loss and the localization loss. So that's um, basically the very standard uh, combination uh, in the fast ASEAN models. And despite that, um, our um, method also uh, construct a very uh, comprehensive benchmark for, for this kind of specific problem. Um, so for interdistribution data sets, uh, we actually train our model um, two data sets, uh, which are the object detection data set. Uh, so here we use the uh, Pascal VOC data set and the, the self-driving car data set, which is Berkeley deep drive, as you see before. Um, for preparing the out of distribution data, we actually um, pre-process the MS Coco and open images and make sure the OD data does not contain the same um, in distribution classes. Um, in in um, each of these images uh, for model evaluation. So for the evaluation matrix, we actually take on um, two very popular and the classic and the standard matrix, which are the FPR95. So this uh, matrix is um, actually the false positive rate when the true positive rate is 95 percentage. So and we also follow the convention and regard the in-distribution samples as the positive class. So you can see uh, we take uh, the threshold uh, at the um, in-distribution data uh, as the figure shows. And um, so that's the basically two matrix for OD detection. And for evaluating the in-distribution uh, performance, we also uh, use the MAP, which is um, the, the, um, the uh, very classic uh, object detection metrics are uh, used in literature. So for the empirical part, um, I guess there's a, there's a question here. 
it wasn't my mouse, sorry. Oh. Um, so how about like uh, we discuss yeah. the questions uh, to the end of the talk and we after we finish all the talk. Okay, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, okay, so let's continue. Okay, gotcha. Oops. So I have to make transition to this. Um, okay. Yeah, so yeah, let's, uh, let's um, put the question for, for at the end. And then, yeah, so, for this slide, we, we basically show that our method can achieve um, competitive performance on the um, uh, object, detect, object level OD detection pipeline. And uh, we actually compare with a bunch of um, baselines, which consists of uh, the post op matrix and uh, the method that require training. So, um, so you can see our method can outperform these baselines while preserving a good uh, object detection performance uh, compared to the to the baselines. And we, we also show uh, by realization that uh, without, uh, with our um, proposed approach, um, our model can actually flag these detected false positive objects as the OD compared to the um, original uh, vanilla object detection models. So yeah, so that concludes the virtual online synthesis paper. But one of the very critical po uh, point and issue in, in the paper is that uh, our approach actually makes strong assumption about the feature space and the sampling procedure, which, uh, which are Gaussian. So that uh, requirement is very hard to satisfy. And then, um, so one of the critical point is that, uh, can we release such assumptions? Uh, during the uh, sampling and the feature space regularization. So that leads to the second paper, uh, which is a joint uh, work with uh, Lei Tian, Jerry, and Sharon from uh, Wuhan University and uh, UW Madison. Uh, the entire framework or the motivation of this paper is, um, is very simple. So we try to sample virtual allies without making any distributional assumptions about the um, feature embeddings. So in that case, we can, um, so the method will provide strong generality and the flexibilities uh, during training. Um, so we can firstly take a look at the uh, synthesis step. So first, in the first step, we try to get an introduction embeddings um, for, from the training data set. And ideally, uh, this embedding should be of high quality. So which I will mention in the next paper. So yeah, so, Firstly, we'll get the in-distribution embeddings. And then uh, in the next step, we'll try to identify the boundary samples using the KN distance. So here, we firstly take the, the penumbra layer features, we normalize it, and uh, we get the hyperspherical embeddings, ZI. And then we try to calculate for each class conditional, uh, for each data point in the class conditional clusters, we calculate um, the distance between it and the, all the other um, features uh, in our clusters. And we measure the distance using the case nearest neighbor distance. So if the distance is very large, then we identify those points as the um, boundary points. So the, that's uh, the, uh, the step two. And then in a step three, then for each of these identified boundary points, we, we Try to synthesize the allies from the Gaussian kernel. So say we um, for 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 each of the boundary points, we uh, sample like uh, ten uh, ten points from the Gaussian distribution, and then we keep only the the, the outliers that has a large KN distance um, between it and all the other uh, embeddings in the class conditional uh, features uh, in in the class, and then. So once we get these outliers, we start denoted as the orange dots. Um, so we can train with the outliers um, together with the in-distribution feature embeddings use, using a very similar objective in VOS. So here, um, so here instead of focusing on the um, object detection networks, we actually um, perform 
uh, empirical evaluation based on the classification networks. Um, so here, uh, for the empirical part, uh, one of the special um, points is that um, our approach demonstrates strong OD detection performance on both CLIP and the ResNet backbone. So here we, we train on very, very large in-distribution data set, which is ImageNet, and we use the uh, full OD data set proposed uh, in this CVPR paper. And um, we show that um, two different backbones, our model can outperform um, all of these baselines, especially the virtual alpha synthesis. Um, so that uh, actually use a very strong assumption on the feature space and assembling procedure. And uh, specifically, we also um, virally compare with VLS uh, when features are not perfectly Gaussians. So here we show that uh, artistic realizations of the synthetic allies, which are denoted as the orange dots for the class Hermit Crab in ImageNet. So here um, we are using our approach, you can see that the allies can be perfectly residing in the boundary compared to the outlier synthesis by um, uh, VOS. Yeah, so that concludes the second paper. So um, the for the next milestone, so one of the um, very um, strong requirement in view, both VOS and MPOS uh, is that they require us to obtain a very high quality representation space. So for VOS, you actually require the feature space to follow the Gaussian distribution. And for MPOS, um, you have to like learn a very compact and uh, um, high quality representation space. Otherwise, your um, features from different class, uh, if your features from different classes overlapped, uh, are overlapping together, then it's very hard to define the boundary points or the um, uh, outliers in that case. So we want to verify whether um, that such representation space is truly of high quality in large uh, object detection models in, in this um, nearest, nearest paper, uh, which is called uh, shaping representations for, for detecting out of distribution objects. But this is a uh, joint work with uh, Gabriel Yifei and Sharon from um, uh, our university. So here, um, so the one of the very key observations is that mo modern object detection models actually learn irregular distributed representations. So here in the figure um, uh, on the right, uh, we actually show the features learned by the vanilla deformal DETER model, which is very recent and uh, a popular um, um, transformer-based object detection model. Um, so here is, um, their features um, is very irregular, and um, so such phenomena is harmful for assembly-based methods such as uh, VOS and MPOS. Or even if we we take on a very um, like flexible distance-based OD detection method such as Mahalanobis distance, because Mahalanobis distance also um, um, requires us to um, assume the, the in-distribution features to be Gaussians, and then we can calculate the Mahalanobis distance between um, the test points and the in-distribution training data for OD detection. So, um, so that's a, a very critical observations in our framework. So um, how to like um, mitigate this problem in a very um, unified way? So in this paper, we actually um, uh, actually propose that our uh, propose to shape shape representations by learning a parametric distribution model uh, in a feature space during training. So uh, uh, firstly, we assume we have the feature embedding H of X. We then uh, try to project everything in the hypers uh, hypersphere. So uh, by saying hypersphere is um, actually we normalize uh, the embeddings of the H X and then try to learn and uh, try to learn a, a class conditional one is feature distributions on, on um, different among different classes. So why we're choosing a one is feature distribution here because VMF distribution is uh, a very popular form of um, distribution modeling for um, hyperspherical embeddings. So here, um, the density functions of um, the VMF distribution is shown here. So we have two key hyper uh, distributional parameters here. The first one is the mean embedding for each class, which is mu of C. And then the second one is the kappa C, which 
actually controls the feature shrinkage, um, uh, shrinkage. Um, so for for each of these class conditional features. So then there's a, also a scalar factor z of d, which depends on the kappa and the, the feature dimension d. So we can calculate it in a closed form way. And here, uh, the kappa here, um, you can also understand it as the um, variance, which is very similar to the variance um, in for the Gaussian distributions. But I, I want to clar clarify that in, in this case, we do not use the Gaussian distribution is that um, the reason behind that is if we want to model um, each of these class conditional features as the Gaussian distribution, then we have to learn a very um, um, high quality covariance matrix, which usually has a shape of D by D. Then if the feature dimension is very high, then it's, um, the literature shows that it's uh, very costly and noisy to learn such um, covariance matrix. But here for each class, uh, in our case, for of environment distribution, you only have a dimension of one uh, for the um, kappa value. So it's very easy to learn and stable to learn here. So then um, once we try to model the class conditional features as the VMF distribution, we um, aim to learn a mapping function to project the input into a point in the hyperspherical embedding space where um, you will have a high probability to assign embedding to the um, to the to its correct class compared to the incorrect class. So, um, so that's basically the probability model here we use here. So once we uh, get a bunch of uh, training data points uh, with the their uh, class labels, we can perform the maximum likelihood estimation over the training data set as our learning objective to uh, minimize. Um, to actually promote such probability model. Um, and then, so once we um, get these probability models, so during test time, we have to design um, some specific test time OD detection scores um, for, for OD detection. So uh, in this paper, we actually explore two kinds of um, uh, scores. The first one is the parametric OD detection scores. So here, say you have a test input uh, X, and then you you firstly get the embedding size of X, and then you normalize it, and then you calculate the density values across um, the C classes and choose the maximum values, um, maximum density values. If the density values are very high, then it's, um, uh, with high probability, this testing input is belonging to the distribution, and otherwise it's um, out of distribution. And the second scores we actually um, use here is the non-parametric KN score. So say you get a testing embedding, you can calculate uh, the distance between this testing embedding to its um, case nearest neighbor among the training data set. And if the distance is very high, then um, it means uh, this testing pool might be out of distribution and vice versa. So it's uh, two kinds of OD detection scores. And we actually show that our framework um, perform um, competitively across different object detection architectures. So here we actually um, choose uh, the transformer-based um, object detection models and the CM-based uh, object detection model and show that our approach can um, outperform these baselines. But one of the very um, unique uh, points about our framework is that our uh, master siren is actually a distance-based approach. So imagine that um, every uh, neural network or every object detection model will have a, um, a good uh, and a universal feature space. And um, if you want to use the like the output-based uh, method, which depends heavily on the uh, training losses of the classification logics, then it's very hard to transfer across different architectures. Say for uh, the transformer-based model uh, is actually optimized by the multi-class focal loss. So, um, it's, so if we uh, directly want to use the energy scores for OD detection, then it's uh, very hard to um, be effective um, on the transformer-based model. So, uh, then 
if we try to do the distance-based approach, then it will provide strong flexibility and generality versus the output-based OD detection. So that's one advantage. So to move on, so I'm going to briefly talk about some of the possible future directions. So, um, so one of the first uh, topic that I'm very interested in is um, whether we can extend this outlier synthesis framework um, for out of distribution generalization. So here, um, out of distribution generalization is uh, rather than the, like flagging those out of distribution data as the OD. So trying to calculate the classification accuracy on those OD data. And besides this point, and the second difference compared to OD detection is that um, the OD generalization al always uses the data with covariance shift compared with a semantic shift uh, in OD detection. So, um, so imagine that, uh, how can we uh, synthesize inliers rather than outliers for data augmentation purposes for OD generalization? So it's, um, if we can synthesize the outlier inliers and uh, try to augment each class by its, the synthesized outliers on, for the figure on the right, then uh, it, it will possibly expand the training distributions of the in distribution training data. So um, how can we uh, transform, or, uh, tra transform the left, uh, the outlier synthesis approach in the current framework uh, to the right figure? So one of the very, very simple trials might be, can we um, reduce the um, variance values by in the uh, non-parametric outlier synthesis approach to make it smaller than the outliers will be more like inlines, which can possibly help OD generalization in my perspective. And then I'm also interested in generalizing the current frameworks on different models. So um, I'm interested in is outlier synthesis and representation learning framework useful on one stage of the detector such as YOLO and uh, um, very recent sparse RCN uh, framework. So that's um, one question that remains to be answered. And then, and we actually um, generate, uh, generalize the current framework on the engine segmentation tasks such as uh, which, uh, where the, the input and the output are pixels um, instead of um, like C dimensional classification logics in the current framework. So that's, um, that's uh, two questions that I'm most interested at. So thanks. So that's my that's my talk.